Persona is one of those series that's known for its soundtracks, and of all its amazing songs, one of my favorites is called Sunset Bridge. I love this song because it always fits the moment perfectly, whether it's helping a friend resolve their problems, or saying a heartfelt goodbye after a long adventure, the music helps in telling the story. I feel like the keyboards speak to the player, Hello. saying something like, look at how far we've come and how much we've grown. As our day comes to an end, we should reminisce on our time together and stare off into the sunset. The song is so well done that I think even without the context of the game, you would still have a pretty good idea of what it's about. That's how well the music encapsulates these moments. These kinds of songs are amazing, and it's often the goal of a composer to make a track that complements the scene like this. Music is such a huge factor in making someone feel immersed in your narrative, characters, and world. And while this is obviously not exclusive to video games, what makes games unique from other forms of media is, of course, the gameplay. I think this makes for a really interesting topic, thinking about how the music immerses someone into the gameplay and how it makes them feel while playing. If the music can still accurately convey what someone's experiencing, even with the added depth of player control, it can do so much for the feel of gameplay and to the overall enjoyment. And in my experience, the one category of video game music that has always done a really good job of this is battle themes. These songs undoubtedly belong to the action segments of a game, and no matter what kind of action it is, they almost always invoke the feeling of excitement, intensity, and fun. Which is, you know, all the things you feel while scrapping with someone. Some of the best battle themes out there can tell the story of its gameplay just as well as a song like Sunset Bridge can do for its narrative. And when it manages to do that, it makes for this amazing feeling that's pretty much exclusive to video games. Take Devil May Cry 5 as an example. The premise of these games have always been pretty simple. There are demons, and you have to beat them up. But what's fun about DMC's combat systems is that they put much more of an emphasis on style and freedom rather than actual fair and balanced fights. And this is made extremely obvious with the game's style meter. Unique attacks, combos, and even taunts all contribute to boosting your style rank, which is basically just a measure of how friggin' rad the game thinks you're being. It's cool! The satisfaction of getting that triple S rating is what encourages players to be creative and have fun with all the game's crazy attacks, which has always been the heart and soul of the series, something that DMC5's battle themes convey perfectly. On top of just being great tracks by themselves, they also change dynamically depending on your style rank. At lower ranks, you get a relatively slow theme with lots of tension and buildup, but the flashier your combos get and the higher your style grade rises, the closer you are to a high-energy, epic theme that's representative of the cool things you're doing in-game. Because of this, the music truly captures what the game is all about, making the player feel cool when they're being cool. The combination of the expressive gameplay with the energetic music matching the intensity makes for some really fun times. Devil Trigger and Bury the Light, Nero and Virgil's battle themes respectively, really stand out in this regard. The composer Casey Edwards clearly made these songs with so much love and care for the series, understanding not only the characters' personalities, but also the upbeat and energetic nature of the gameplay. This, combined with how the songs are implemented into the fights, genuinely makes for some of the most fun and immersive battle segments I have ever played. This is a great example of how a battle theme fits with its combat, and a good part of that is due to it being dynamic during gameplay. Being able to change the song depending on certain in-game conditions makes matching the mood a lot easier. Take a look at Mario Kart, where once someone reaches their final lap, the course theme gets faster and everyone immediately thinks, uh oh, I have to hurry. So you know, you gamer lean, focus up, and try to go as fast as possible. In the final lap of the race, where it's the most important to speed up, it makes a lot of sense for the music to also speed up. Mario Kart races aren't exactly battles in the traditional sense, but everyone's fighting their own battle, right? My point is that making the song pick up in pace and intensity during really crucial moments is a pretty common thing, and it's extremely effective at getting the player's heart rate up and making those big, exciting moments feel important. As if the music is telling you, hey, you need to focus because it's getting intense. 
A game that does this really well is Street Fighter 6, which also makes use of dynamic battle themes. Now, whether you actually like Street Fighter 6's music or not is totally subjective, but I play Kami and her theme is cool, so you know. About that. Either way, the game definitely makes good use of the music it has, and even if you're a newbie like me, it does a great job of capturing the feel of a competitive fight. Let me explain. Every character has their own unique battle theme, and during a game, certain conditions will change it slightly in order to reflect the scenario a bit better. Like when someone's low on health, the music becomes somewhat dissonant, or when the game is transitioning between rounds, some of the instruments go away for a more quiet tone. The most noticeable switch, however, happens in the third and final round, where the beat drops and the song's climax starts to kick in. Saving the best part of a character's theme for the third and final round is such a smart decision. Just by definition, making it to the third round means both players have an equal chance to win. They've each taken a round before, so it just becomes a game of who can do it one final time. This automatically makes the situation much more tense than if it was just a 2-0 sweep. Let's say a top 500 master rank player beats up little Timmy who got the game for Christmas, I wouldn't exactly call that a competitive match. It's knowing that anyone has a chance to win the game that creates such a competitive environment. And if you manage to scrape out the win in that scenario, it feels so much better than just stomping on some newbie. Outplaying your opponent and beating good players is the main appeal of most fighting games. People like to win. Because of that, the adrenaline you feel during a tiebreaker like this will already be enough to get players invested into the game. But when you start to hear the most intense part of your character's theme kick in, it's like the music is cheering you on. It gives you this mental boost that makes you feel like you can really do it. The finale of these songs perfectly capture the stakes of the final round, and will always make it feel more climactic than the rest of the game, always hyping the players up and truly embodying the essence of a good competition. Whether you realize it or not, your brain starts to associate feelings or experiences with whatever music you happen to be listening to at the time. This is definitely true in the case of Devil May Cry or Street Fighter, where you start to expect certain song changes depending on the in-game circumstances. I bring this up because music association and media can sometimes be used the other way around, where the song registers first and then the feelings or memories start to come in, and it can kind of become a hint at what's going to happen next. Sort of like Pavlov's dog, but instead you get, like, Pavlov's Gamer or something. A great example of this concept in gaming is Breath of the Wild and the Guardian theme. You'll be minding your business until you hear that creepy piano, and you almost instantly begin to panic because you now know that one of the strongest enemies in the game is on your tail. Those first trickles of the piano notes are super haunting, so it acts as a great opening for this kind of enemy. Okay, the fact I've gone this long talking about battle themes without directly mentioning a JRPG is probably enough criminal evidence to put me in jail for a very, very long time. But this feels like the best time to bring them up, as many JRPGs like to implement similar intros into their battle themes as well. It's normally a super fast riff that only plays at the very beginning, in order to signify the start of battle and tell the player what's going on. Although it's a pretty dated mechanic, random encounters used to fit this really well, where out of nowhere you'd be greeted with a transition effect and a quick musical opening that just screams, get ready for battle, there's an enemy approaching. Hands down the most iconic example of this is Pokemon, but seriously, it's everywhere in older JRPGs. It's a simple but effective way to introduce a fight, which is why despite most modern JRPGs getting rid of random encounters and losing that element of surprise, they typically keep these intro riffs. And while they still do a good job at introducing a battle, no modern series has managed to use its music like this quite as effectively as Xenoblade Chronicles and its unique monster themes. 
Xenoblade has always had insanely creative worlds. So naturally, the biggest part of the gameplay is exploring huge open areas and fighting all the different kinds of enemies you find there. Some of these enemies, however, are specially designed, super juiced up bosses that make for some really interesting, albeit challenging fights. They're a big part of the game's level design, and whether you actually want to fight them or not, they're sure to change up the pace whenever you find one. Some come in pairs, some call for reinforcements, some are 50 levels higher than you and will kill you in a single hit. Each of them have some kind of gimmick that makes them notably different from the regular enemies, including each of them having their own distinct names. Yo, uh, Plankton? You G? Uh, hey! And because of how unpredictable and powerful they can be, you know that whenever you encounter one, it's gonna be a very intense, very unique situation. These enemies are appropriately called unique monsters, and to add on to this uniqueness, every game has a different battle theme that only plays when you engage with one of them. You Will Know Our Names is the title of the first one, and each one after that makes some kind of play on this, which, given the circumstances, fits really well. Right off the bat, the fact these themes are exclusive to unique monsters means your brain will already associate them with danger the moment you hear it. Like I said, these enemies can be pretty intimidating, and especially if you're new to the game, they're very difficult to take on meaning the heavy and dissonant guitar riffs that are used at the beginning act more as a warning rather than a hype introduction. When hearing the opening notes of one of these themes, players immediately begin to assess the situation and try to figure out if they can beat the unique monster or if they have to run. It's a quick gut reaction that stems from the start of these songs. This creates situations similar to Breath of the Wild, where you'll be minding your own business and then all of a sudden you hear something like this. such a fitting intro for these mini-bosses, implying exactly what it's trying to imply. No other battle theme that I can think of invokes this kind of feeling and also makes such great use of it during gameplay. And what's cool is if the player chooses to stay and fight the unique monster, the music continues to match the scene. Like I said earlier, each game has a different unique monster theme, but they all tend to follow a similar formula. Starting with an explosive opening, followed by a suspenseful verse, and finally reaching a triumphant hard rock chorus that really complements the efforts of the player. This formula always makes sense in the context of the game, no matter what the player decides to do or how the battle turns out in the end. If you run away from a unique monster or die early on trying to fight one, you're never going to make it to the epic chorus. And just like Street Fighter VI, a big climactic theme wouldn't make a lot of sense anyways if the fight is super one-sided like this. And this stays true if the player is the much stronger one. If you go back to the starting area after beating the game and one-shot the level 5 bunny unique monster, the battle won't last long enough to reach the chorus either. Xenoblade 3 takes this even further by implementing a dynamic unique monster theme. Once the boss gets down to a certain health, the key changes and the chorus part loops with an awesome guitar solo. The big beat drops will only ever happen when there's a potential threat to the player and they manage to overcome it. Because of this, it feels like the song changes from being about the unique monsters to being about the player, starting as the tale of a threatening, insurmountable enemy and becoming the story of a group of heroes and their unlikely triumph. These themes add so much depth to an already crucial part of the world, and I can't help but appreciate it while playing. Being able to always encapsulate the moment like that while also keeping such an amazing sound, in my opinion, makes for the perfect battle theme. I love these songs because they always fit the moment perfectly. Whether it's running away in a panicked frenzy or persevering and taking down a legendary opponent, the music helps in telling the story. It's like the electric guitars speak to the player, saying something like, we might be up against a tough opponent, but if we put our strength together and try our best, there's no one in the world that can beat us. Right here, right now, we're going to prove that we're even more of a threat than you are. So you'd better get ready, because by the time this fight is done, you will know our names. Hey, thanks so much for watching. In terms of music theory and composition, I'm not exactly qualified to talk about this kind of stuff, but hopefully I still got my point across. If you are interested in that kind of stuff, I really recommend checking out Alex Mukala. 
He's an actual composer, and he's done a video on You Will Know Our Names and Devil May Cry 5's themes, so definitely give those a watch. Also, let me know if there's any battle themes I didn't talk about that you think I should have. I read every single comment, and I love talking about this kind of stuff, so yeah, let me know. Anyways, that's all I gotta say. Thank you again so much for watching. We will know its name for certain.